Hey everybody, today's my redemption day for a couple of guns. Um, that 30 out 6 semi-automatic model 7400, um, I bought a spring for the trigger and put that trigger spring in and I'm uh, going to try that, see if that is a little bit easier to pull and hopefully I'll get some decent shots. Um, hey everybody, I um, after shooting that 30 out 6 semi-automatic for a while and not really liking the trigger on that, I did a lot of research. Went online and found uh, is it M Carbo. Let me show you what I got. M Carbo. They uh, actually make a spring. Just a small spring there. Just ordered it. Um, to set inside to replace a spring that's in that. Set the trigger. That's supposed to ease up on that uh, trigger pull a little bit. Said it could maybe reduce it by half. So that'll be awesome. Um, let me show you what I got over here on the doing it on my bed that way if the spring flies out hopefully I can find it <laughs> but it should be awesome let's show you what I got okay I punch these two pins out and then this trigger assembly should pull out just gonna pay attention to a little rod that goes in this way when you're pulling that out of there you got the center punches right there this right here and right there spring cross $12.95 and it costs $7 almost to ship it I don't know why that tiny little spring cost seven dollars a ship, but that's what it was, and it was just in this manila envelope here, it wasn't in any kind of a box. So but that's what it cost. Uh, I did see that um, Timony also makes something, but they actually have three springs, and then they have a, another little piece you got to replace in your trigger. There's a little bit more to it to do that one, but it makes it more adjustable. But as long as this gets dropped by half, I think that'll be fine. So I'll uh, start working on that. There are a couple of videos online already on uh, how to replace that. So I'm not going to really do a whole full video on that. You can go online and uh, check those out. Um, this spring is kind of like a universal Remington spring. It's for the 870 shotgun and also the 742, the 7400, the 7600, uh, that pump, and also the... the uh, was it the newest one? Um, 750 as well. Yeah. So uh, we'll get to working on that and we'll see what happens. Okay, yeah, that out of there pretty simple. That spring right there is the spring's going to be replaced. And uh, while I get this all out, I will give that a cleaning. That's the uh, caulking assembly that'll have to be caulked before we put that back in. And I'm going to. They say once you have this assembly out, if you cock that, try and pull that trigger, make sure this hammer doesn't come all the way back down again. You gotta hold it, uh, cause things could fly out if you try and fire this assembly while it's um, out of the gun. So there's that. Here's the gun. I am gonna clean inside there as well, just cause it's, everything's out of there and that's where the assembly goes and that little shaft goes, right, the rod goes there. So it's not very dirty, but I will give it a clean in anyway. Everything's back together. Cleaned out in the inside. Works. Definitely feel that it has a little bit less pull on it. It still has a little bit of creep, but it just still, you know, it fires a lot sooner than it did before. It was pretty hard before. It felt like it was just dragging against the side. It was so uh, stiff all the way before it would let go. But Pretty smooth now. It's empty. Nothing in it. Clips right over there. Nothing in the chamber. Yeah, it's definitely, let's go a lot easier. So hopefully that's all I need for that. And she should be good, hopefully. I don't want to get rid of it. Got some money into it and I really like it so far. 30 out 6 is a great caliber to have. We'll see how she fires in huh? a couple of days. I'll wait for the weather to change here and take this one and the 7 mm arm to Magnum Christensen arms out. Get them nailed down on the paper. Well, I got 50 yards here so far because I'm also doing a redemption for my um, Christensen arms rifle, the Mesa long range 7 mm arm to Magnum. Remember before. I bought it and uh, tried shooting it and it wouldn't even shoot. 
sent it to back to them they fixed it it was just a uh, something wasn't turned out all the way on the bolt so it wasn't the firing pin wasn't hitting the primer so now i'm going to try and shoot here first i'll do a, i usually do a 50 yard shot first for a first time shooting a gun even though it was laser bore sighted just to get it on paper and make sure it's you know hitting the paper before i go back 100 yards so that's what i'm doing today hopefully uh redemption works for both of these guns and we'll see how she goes I'm gonna shoot off the tailgate. Use the tailgate as a table because I forgot the table. I'm trying to remember everything else. There's a target. Get the spot and scope. So I can see where I'm hitting. Of course I remember the spot and scope, but I forgot the table. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna just gonna shoot the uh the uh, the Christensen Arms mess of long range here at 50 yards just to get it on the paper because he's never been shot at a range before, so I'm gonna do that first, and um, then I'll go back out 100 and shoot the 30 out six and the seven millimeter. Gonna shoot the uh, seven millimeter Remington Magnum in the uh, Christensen Arms Mesa long range first. Um, about 53 yards right here. I'm shooting these. The uh, Hornady seven millimeter Remington Magnum 154 grain SSTs as the bullet. Shooting high and right right now. Look at it with a spot and scope. Get a better idea where I gotta move it to. <clears throat> well, she fires. That's a good thing. That muzzle brake on it doesn't kick that bad at all. Going down with another one. I have the steadiest of shots here. I hold it somehow steadier than I did before. One's not bad. <clears throat> Shooting a little high, which we're gonna still want a little high for this range anyway. And it's about two inches high, a half inch off to the left now. So that could have been my shot. So I think I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that the way it is and move back. I try and find some way I can mark those shots. Okay, there's the target. First shot was the one that's higher and to the right. After some adjustment, second shot is a little bit lower and to the left. So I'm gonna put some stickers on those, uh, block them out so there's nothing there. And then I'm gonna go back to 100 yards and dial it seven mil and make the magnum in and also try some shots with the 30 out six, though I may put a different target on for that. Had to use a law person. Clear out a trail. Truck's about 53 yards from the target. I have to bring it back here, which should be about 100. That's where I had it last year. So I'll bring it back here and do a range finder, range on it, and uh, get everything set up and get ready to shoot from here. All right, get everything all set up. It's 101 and a half yards down there. Not bad for. Uh, just a guesstimation of where it was last year. So we will see. Uh, 
We'll see how good it goes. All right, I'm all set. I'm gonna send another one down range for the seven millimeter and see what happens. This is at a hundred yards now. Out of it. Let's see what happens here. Yeah. Maybe it does some of it high. A few inches, though, I drop it down. See what it looks like before I take safety off. It still moves a lot. This is not optimal for shooting. It's bouncing. Oh, the truck's getting wind, catching the wind or what? Look. <laughs> Gotta come down a little bit more and just to the right. <sighs> I don't know the wind's pushing the truck or what it is, but it's not staying still at all. And I'll drop it down just a little bit more. Recoil is not bad at all. Feels about like a 243 probably. Not quite a 308. It's right around there with that muzzle brake on there for seven mil. That's really good. Dialing it down. It's going good. It's just I don't want to go too low. I don't want to use any more ammo than I have to. So this one might be where I need it right here. If it is, I'll try and put two more shots in with it and see what it, how it groups. Trigger is awesome. Really nice. Trigger tech trigger is really nice. Let's see how she goes here. Yeah. How to stay still? Oh, it's this bag, or I ordered a nice range bag. Just haven't got it yet. Bush hog down here. <laughs> Got a tractor and the money. <laughs> I have neither. Okay. But an inch group on the left. I just had to move it over an inch and a half. So that should put it dead center. We'll see how it goes. <clears throat> Here's a tail of the tape for this. You can see it scun the top. That was the first shot. So uh, it was still high. So I dropped it down quite a ways. And the second shot is right there. 
So I dropped it down more and went way down. Adjusted it one more time, put a three inch group right here, moved it over an inch and a half, and I took two more shots right there in the center. So the three inch group is still within the one I'm away. The two inch group, just a half, just a little bit over half I'm away. So the Christensen Arms is doing pretty damn good. Trigger is awesome. Gun goes off perfect. It's not really any creep to it at all. It's just a little bit of pressure. I'm just saying three or four pounds and she's gone. And recoil's almost nil because, well, about, about 243 type of style, you know, recoil wise because of that muzzle brake at the end of it. And it's awesome for 7mm and Remington Magnum. So that is a 7mm. I stopped, instead of putting a three shot group at that two shot, I decided to stop because. I already shot 10, 10 rounds and I wanted to save 10 to hunt with. I want to try and use the same ammunition. You should always do that. Use the same ammunition, preferably from the same box when you're hunting. You know, same box, lot. That, that way you're staying with the same lot number and everything. So whoever reloaded that ammunition at the factory, you know, it should be equal all the way through. So I wanted to save some ammunition for that. So I'm going to put up a new target now and uh, try the 30 6 with that new trigger spring and see how that goes. Well, I'm pretty happy with the way that uh, 7 millimeter is shooting. Trigger's awesome. The gun feels really nice in the hands. Recoil's not much of anything. So I'm going to uh, call that good. She's an inch high. Uh, one half MOA at 100 yards. So uh, I'm going to call that good for now. Save some ammo, because ammo is not cheap. That's all like 60 bucks for that box. So I'm going to go to the 30 6 and hope that spring helps out a lot. And uh, we'll see how that one goes. Well, I'm going to the 30 6 try now. Hopefully it does well, because I really like the gun. <coughs> I like the way it feels in the hands and stuff. And, uh, you know, I just hope that trigger is a little bit better so I can be a little bit more accurate with it. Uh, it was horrible before. It's probably 6 or 8 pounds, felt like anyway. It was pretty hard to pull back. felt like it was scratching all the way too so i took that trigger out of the housing there and oiled it all up and uh replaced that spring and made sure nothing was rubbing or clicking or holding on to anything put that all back in together and hopefully it'll work good for me i really like the gun it's always good to have a semi-automatic just for follow-up shots for certain things you know if you're out in the thick brush or something or you know hunting a moose and you need that second follow-up shot it's really good to have so i'm gonna give it a shot and we'll see how she goes Redemption for the uh, Christians and Arms was great. Did well. She shot really well. But no problems with that. It's a great gun. I like that. Now hopefully this this Remington semi-automatic will do as well. This is a two and a half to ten. The uh, Christians and Arms has a three to a fifteen power. So a little, this that one had a little bit you know closer view. This is a ten power. So we'll see how she goes. Still a little bit of creep on the trigger, but you can't change the creep, you just change the pull. The pull is definitely better. Still creep on the, you just gotta get used to that trigger. There was no creep on that Christensen Arms, it was solid. It was either off or it was on. This one you got a little bit of creep before she lets go, but that spring made it a lot, lot lighter pull on it, so I, I like it. It's not that bad as long as I can shoot it well. Now I gotta see what, where my shot went. I see where the first one went. I can't tell where that second shot went. Might have uh, pulled it on the creep on it. Well, shooting 30 out six for a little bit here. The trigger's still not perfect. It's that creep. I just can't stand the creep on it. Um, I got it probably within a, I don't know, two MOA. But that's about as good as I'm going to get with it. 
is not used to that kind of trigger. It's kind of stiff on me. I'll, uh, I put a bunch of stickers on um, some of my previous shots with it because it was all over the place for a while until I held it a little bit better and really concentrate on pulling that trigger back without moving it, but it's really hard. I'll uh, go up there and show you the uh, the target. Okay, there's the target. My last four shots shooting the 30 6 semi-automatic. Obviously, the one farthest to the left was the first one. Took a second shot and moved in a little bit more. So I decided to bring it in a little bit. I brought it in, brought it to the left, just to the left of that bullseye. And then I tried one more, uh, brought it in like two clicks more and brought it over to the, just over the top of the center there, slightly to the right, but that's good. But that's a lot of shooting to get that to do that. And that trigger just takes a long time to get used to that trigger because it's got such a creep to it that it, you're pulling and pulling before finally let's go. That spring I put in helped a little bit, but it didn't help as much as I was hoping it would. So we'll see what happens. I mean, this is a great gun if somebody who's walking through the woods and, you know, you're within 100 yards or so. You, you know, it shoots really well for that. But my kind of shooting, I have to shoot longer range and I have to have a trigger that lets go when I need it to, not when it decides to. So I may trade that in for another bolt action. Maybe 270 or 30 out six, something like that, but we'll see. But it does shoot well. It's just you got to really take your time, slowly squeeze that trigger, and it's hard to get used to that. Maybe it's my own fault having so many different guns with so many different triggers that I'm used to, and now I got that Christensen Arms with that Trigger Tech trigger, which is really nice trigger, and that Marlin Lever Action 3030. I have that trigger is just as good as that one. Very nice, so it, you get triggers like that and it's hard to deal with a trigger like this, but it does shoot well. I mean, you're within, what's that, inch and a half MOA there, you know, one and a half MOA. I mean, definitely deer's dead shooting it, but we'll see.